Dr. Birnbaum, thank you for sharing such valuable insights on the industry sector. I believe between His Excellence's speech and your session, I'll have to cut down my speech to half page. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be here in Singapore, a truly vibrant and sophisticated country. We are gathered here today because access to reliable energy is fundamental to any nation's ability to grow, to prosper, and to empower its people. In today's interconnected global economy, we are today increasingly reliant on the stability of our trade partners to secure our own resources. In fact, resource security is arguably this generation's defining challenge. We are today confronted with the challenge of balancing a steep growth trajectory while minimizing climate risk. We must power our societies today while taking into account future demand. In a world surging with populations and finite resources, we must rethink how traditional energy and how renewable energy interact and complement each other. This is the backdrop from which private and public sector must operate. It is a challenge, but a challenge that presents tremendous opportunities. For decades, the United Arab Emirates has been a reliable partner and supplier of energy to Asia. And today, with Asia being firmly at the epicenter of the increasingly large demand on energy, we also recognize the changing needs of the region. A need to diversify the energy mix and to meet new demands. And as a country blessed with hydrocarbons, we also understand this challenge because we are also required to introduce renewable energy that will preserve and extend the life of our hydrocarbon resources. In response, we have taken action Today, we have deployed several renewable energy projects on a global scale. And in parallel, we have also modernized our existing hydrocarbon sector. Through that, we are able to address energy security. We are able to drive new commercial opportunities, extend the life of our reserves, contribute to a low carbon economy, and create new job opportunities. I come here with a unique perspective, uh, coming from a renewable energy company that operates from the heart of the world's hydrocarbon reserves. For more than a century, hydrocarbons have been essential to powering development, and today they serve as a bridge to the future. But like any industry, we must innovate to stay ahead. So we innovated in our hydrocarbon sector first, what we did is that we are now deploying uh, commercial scale carbon capture usage and storage. This technology allows us to capture carbon, sequester it, and then recover even more oil while maintaining a reliable supply to all our consumers abroad. Some come to me and ask me, uh, you know, you're, doing, you're working on renewable and renewable energy is competing with traditional resources. Our view personally is that they're actually complementary. You see, if you, if you leave uh, global demand unchecked with due time, they might outstrip supply. And to us, renewable energy has a critical role in that it naturally diffuses the pressure on the hydrocarbon reserves. As a responsible global energy supplier, we recognize the importance of being energy agnostic and hence we supply both conventional and renewable energy. After, after decades of developing our own expertise in oil and gas in our own home sector, we are today exporting that know-how on a global scale through Mubadala Petroleum. In fact, one of our largest explorations is in Southeast Asia. In parallel and through Masdar, we have also extended our energy leadership to include renewables. 
And today, between Europe in partnership with EOM, uh, Middle East and Africa, we have collectively one gigawatts of clean energy being produced to the grid. But that to us is only the beginning. Asia will increasingly depend on global markets for oil, coal, and LNG imports. But we see clean energy with regards to Asia to be a promising priority. Today, Asia is by far the largest market for renewable energy. Uh, estimates are a growth of 6% till 2035. And one thing we have learned through our work at Mustar is that both large and small scale solutions are effective, especially in a continent as vast and diverse as Asia. Access to energy is a pathway to economic growth. And even the smallest amount underpins a nation's ability to deliver basic services and to promote social opportunities. Within Masdar, we have delivered several energy access programs uh, in, um, in Mauritania, in Seychelles, and Afghanistan, and we've seen the rewards of that. One of the major rewards is that you insulate that specific region from fluctuating fuel prices. We also avoid energy shortfalls, but more importantly, it's about economic reinvigoration. So adding clean energy access to remote locations has a tremendous domestic impact. Ladies and gentlemen, today's session is building energy connections, but we believe that the future of energy is incomplete if we don't take into account the water required to generate energy, the energy required to transport and treat water, and finally, the energy and water required to cultivate food. We all share a responsibility of gaining access to these three intricate and interrelated resources, be it here in Singapore or in the United Arab Emirates, no one country is immune. If you take Singapore, for example, uh, Singapore is one of the most developed nations in Southeast Asia, yet they are confronted with a big challenge uh, of providing affordable, high-quality water. But without a native source, uh, Singapore has been mainly reliant on imports. However, Singapore has taken action. Today, through desalination, through recycling, through capturing rainfall and various other measures, Singapore is taking a major stride to secure its water resources. In the Arabian Gulf, this relationship between energy and water is magnified. In a region that accounts for 20% of global oil supply, we also account for 50% of global desalination capacity. We rely on seawater for desalination uh, a costly and very energy-intensive process. So what we did is that we took action. Mazdar today is engaged in a pilot that will test and develop seawater desalination technology powered by renewable energy. This pilot will bridge the gap between promising early desalination technologies and large-scale industrial applications powered by renewable energy. We are confident that this approach will yield a solution, and we believe there's a potential to roll out this solution to countries that rely on desalination. In an interconnected, unpredictable world, one thing is certain. No matter how fast we innovate, no matter how fast we find new sources of energy, society will find ways to consume it. We cannot rely on technologies of today to power cities of the future. We must embrace innovation, and we must embrace industrial change. In today's economy, it is the world energy market that puts us together. In summary, we all depend on each other. The complexities of this resource security requires a unified effort, and this effort starts today, this week, in Seoul. Only through the power of partnership, by building energy connections, will we shape our future and develop sustainably. 
Nobody could argue that competition is essential. We're not against competition. What we're advocating here is a model where partners share risk, where they innovate, and where they reap the rewards. And we have seen this model in various other locations while we have been operating. Gathered today here are leaders, leaders of government, leaders of you know, energy, academia, and finance. Let us collaborate this week and find opportunities to forge collaborations that deliver viable, real-world energy solutions. Thank you, and I wish you all a successful conference. Thank you, Dr. Verlo.